Good morning, everybody. And thank you, um, everybody, for coming um, in person today. It's great to see real people um, in front of you and your smiling faces. <laughs> um, so this is uh, really, uh, it's an honor to sort of start off this program. Um, so this has been, I think, something that's been in the making for years now. And um, it's been really great to be a part of this groundswell of interest in brain metastasis and leptomeningeal disease. And really, my role has been to help just sort of bring people together. And it's been, um, I would say, a, a real natural um, process because everyone is really interested in, in moving this forward. So I'm um, just going to give you a few thoughts about the program as we've been sort of thinking about uh, putting it together. So um, we all know that advanced metastatic cancer is basically incurable. And you can see the five-year survival rates based on tumor stage. And this slide here, just a, a general um, <clears throat> estimation. But certainly understanding the biology is really critical. Um, and I think we're just now starting to understand what initiates that metastatic process and more particularly why tumors go to the brain. And this is just critical for us to be able to develop better treatments and hopefully preventive strategies. We know brain metastases are far more common than primary brain tumors. And so it makes a lot of sense with such a strong CNS program here that we spend a lot of attention. There's you know 300,000 um, patients with brain mets diagnosed every year. And even more than that, have occult metastases, you know, uh, on postmortem studies. We know the incidence is increasing, which is probably because medical oncologists are developing better and better therapies. Um, and we're also having better imaging so that we can actually pick up very small metastases before they become problematic. <clears throat> So probably around 30% of patients, um, and this would include UCSF, that have brain, brain metastases. Um, and you know the mainstays of treatment for many, many decades have been surgery and also radiation. And certainly we're not replacing those really critical therapies, but we now have a couple of cases where the medical therapies are actually making significant strides and actually providing significant benefit to patients. And, and there are not a lot of them, but there are a few things like immunotherapy for asymptomatic um, melanoma brain metastasis. Patients not on steroids um, have been really quite effective. Response rates over 60%, some of which are, are very, very durable. Um, and then, you know, we have brain penetrant HER2 inhibitors. We have BRAF mech inhibitors for melanoma, um, and, and these work um, probably not quite as uh, durable as what we see with immunotherapy. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, these are, are new opportunities to potentially delay radiation um, and, um, and, and save that for, for recurrence. Um, across the country, there are now a few centers that have put together a comprehensive program, but I think this is a, a great opportunity for, for UCSF to really step up and, and um, become one of these, these comprehensive uh, centers that addressing this uh, growing unmet uh, medical need. So this is a kind of an estimation. I, I asked Joanna Phillips, she received somewhere around 40 to 50 surgical cases a year, but she said this is probably not completely uh, the total volume, because there are some cases that are, are performed on, on the weekends where they may not actually get the tissue in the, in the tissue bank, but nonetheless, this is uh, probably a pretty good estimate of surgical cases. Um, <clears throat> Marisa is estimating somewhere around 150 outpatient, 100 inpatient units, and then Steve Bronstein um, is demonstrated just beautifully here the number of increasing number of patients who are getting radiosurgery for um, CNS uh, brain metastases. Um, at this point, we don't have, I think, many or any clinical trials for, you know, it's dedicated for brain metastases. We have a couple that are opening soon. Um, so this is a really great opportunity for us to really drive translational research um, objectives um, as, we, as we grow the program. This is just sort of a, a simplified version of kind of what we were thinking about in terms of the governance. We have an internal advisory committee co-directors today, as you heard, Marisa and Michelle Malesko. And then, you know, this is a, a multidisciplinary effort. So there's people from all of across the institution, radiation, oncology, neurosurgery, and medical oncology that are involved in trying to bring together this program. 
The overall vision is really to serve as a leading CNS metastasis tumor program, um, not only nationally, but internationally, um, through clinical excellence, innovation, and clinical and translational research for treatment, early detection, and prevention of tumors metastatic to the CNS. And along with this, we'd be developing a you know, robust biorepository and biomarker program, um, <clears throat> establish a, a broad portfolio of clinical trials, um, and also um, develop uh, preclinical models, uh, much of, of work you'll, you'll hear about later today. So what are some of the benefits of this? Certainly a patient-centric interdisciplinary experience is, is going to help with you know, the patient experience. Uh, typically, you know, when, when patients are seen in the multidisciplinary clinics, there's very high uh, ratings uh, for, their, for their care. Um, there's opportunities to really centralize, maybe with a nurse navigator, get patients um, new to the institution, referred uh, to, the, to the right place. Um, and uh, I think we all know, you know, the sort of the neurology saying that time is brain. Um, so initiating CNS-directed therapy early on is, is really critical. And this central hub um, would also allow us to to develop and conduct innovative clinical trials that would be multidisciplinary in nature. <clears throat> there are other potential benefits as well, such as the end of life planning. We know the asco quapi um, guidelines are recommending you know, ad advanced care planning notes very early on. And these patients, as we know, are very sick and can very quickly decompensate. Um, so seeing these patients in a, in a centralized multidisciplinary fashion would help us to initiate and, and uh, um, do better on, the, on that particular um, guideline, which is really critical uh, for these, these sick patients. And then there's also a growing interest in cancer neuroscience. Um, so we know that our treatments can impact normal brain function, but the other is opposite is also probably true where the normal brain function can actually um, promote tumor progression. And so there's a lot of interest in, in under, better understanding this as we, as we move forward. So this would be sort of the, the total um, comprehensive program. It would have this multidisciplinary um, metastasis uh, program that would include comprehensive clinical care, biospecimen, um, biomarkers, um, the discovery mechanisms of disease, you know, um, preclinical models, and then cross-disciplinary um, clinical trial portfolio. And of course, it's always important to remember there's education, community outreach, that is, it's really a, a critical component of, of what we do uh, across the board. So this is uh, uh, sort of the end for me. Um, just, just wanted to invite everyone. Um, we are having working group meetings at 7 a.m. on Monday mornings. Um, it's a really great time. Um, start the week off. And um, <laughs> So everybody is welcome to attend and we can, we can send out those invites. Um, I think it's really a great time to discuss. And then please make sure you, you tune in at around 11.45 because Marisa is going to discuss a little bit more about the ongoing programmatic efforts. And this is just a summary of the program today. I would like to just highlight that um, I think around 9.45 or so, Eric Small is going to join us and, and talk a little bit about a hub and potential funding opportunities. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.